All right. Got my microphone fixed. Apparently, I tore off the antenna at some point in time before church even started. So, I mean, talk about being excited about church getting going. I mean, somehow I must have clipped the old antenna and I tore it right out. So, hey, it's all good. We're fixed. Thank you, Kyle and team back there uh, for helping out. Uh, so just a couple points. I know Liz already mentioned a lot of these things, uh, but, you know, voting is coming up pretty soon. The election is happening in T minus maybe nine days, 10 days. Okay, it's the Tuesday. I think y'all know that. Yeah, okay. It's that Tuesday in November that's coming up. Believe it or not, we're almost in November. Uh, there's a lot of important issues at stake. Uh, we've talked about a lot of them last week. Well, not a lot of them, but I mentioned a lot of different things last week. Uh, something I would encourage you to research and look at is the Equality Act as well. Uh, I was going to get into that deeper. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that this morning and what it means and what it looks like and who's pushing for it and the impacts that it could have. I think we all should be aware of some of the major issues. Uh, of course, abortion is a big issue as well. And really, the Supreme Court is a major issue uh, for us uh, as well. So I just encourage you guys to know the issues, research them. Don't just go along with what your neighbor's doing because there's a lot of yard signs out there. Okay. I saw a funny joke that said... Uh, Trump was good. If it's based on, based on yard signs, Trump was going to come in first, and firewood for sale was going to come in second, and then, and then Biden would come in third. And so that's just based on anecdotal evidence of the number of things you see when driving around. Of course, what's that? Not in our neighborhood. So I guess it depends on where you drive around at, okay? Anyway, that's coming up. The guides are back there. The intro, I, what I like about the guides is that it, it has the local elections as well. So sometimes we get mixed up and we're not sure what district, I mean, at least if it's not you, it's me. You know, I'm in this district when it comes to the, to the House of Representatives, but I'm in this district when it comes to the state and, the, and Harrisburg, and I'm in this, you know, so you go back and forth. I would encourage you, it's called, uh, let me see, I wrote this down, vote 411. Vote 411. If you Google that or put that in there, you put your address actually in there, your ballot will come up. Like it'll show you specifically, vote 411, it'll show you specifically based on your address all of the races that pertain to you, okay? Not that you couldn't figure that out by driving around your neighborhood, but you'll be able to see those. So I encourage you to check that out as well uh, for some more information. But like I said last week, our hope is not in a party, but our hope is in Jesus, amen? Amen. We're going to pray over the offering here and the message. Uh, I know we've been encouraging people to be reading the Bible and praying more. Uh, and I want to read out of Acts 20, verse 35. And if you haven't noticed, I, I try to tie the scriptures I'm using for offering or benediction with the scriptures that you would have been reading this week uh, if you were doing the reading plan with us. Uh, so Acts 20, verse 35, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen? It is, and I have found this out over and over and over in my life. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And what, what a wonderful thing is the Lord always speaks of a cheerful giver. Amen? He loves a cheerful giver. So let's pray over our offering and the message this morning. Heavenly Father, we just come to you. We thank you for every gift, every giver. We thank you, Father God, for the years and years of faithfulness that people have poured in their time and their talents and their finances into this church. Father, I thank you for a fresh vision moving forward. Not that it's much different, Father God, but it's just fresh and it's new and it's what you have in store for Erie Christian Fellowship Church. And so, Father, I thank you that you have a plan and a purpose, and your word says that you will build your church, and that the gates of hell, the gates of hell cannot stop it. Amen. Father, we just thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for that nothing can come against it. We praise and worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, open your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2 and verse 40. I'm going to read a passage of scripture here, but I want to, want to do, I want to preface this first. In Proverbs 29, 18, Proverbs 29, 18, if you want to pull that one up first there, AV team, got that up there. 
It says, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. Other versions say, where there is no vision, the people perish. It says in Habakkuk, I don't have that up here for you. I'm going to pull this up on my phone. I just want to, re- I want to read this scripture to you this morning. And yes, I'm going to write on this whiteboard. The Habakkuk 2, verses 2 and 3, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. <laughs> well, yeah, we're going to do it. I encourage you, if you need to take notes, or if you've got no paper, or maybe you have an app that can draw something in your phone, or even just take notes, I encourage you to do that. Write the vision and make it plain on tablets and whiteboards. We're in 2020. Make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. The goal here this morning is to begin to cast a vision for this church that literally makes you want to run when you see it, that makes you want to run when you read it, that says, you know what, I want to partner with this vision. I want to get behind this vision. I am willing to do whatever the Lord tells me to go do or to give of my time, my talents, my resources, whatever. And I didn't title this message Decision 2020. But now I feel like I need to. Because honestly, over the next couple of weeks, just like there's a decision happening from an election perspective, I'm going to cast the direction of where this church is moving. And to be honest, you are all going to have to decide, are you in or are you out? Are you in or are you out? Because to be honest with you, I love each and every one of you, but I do not want a church congregation that comes in week after week and sits there and doesn't get into the game. Guys, the time is short. We don't have time to have innocent bystanders any longer. We can't have people on the bench any longer. There are things that the Lord wants to go do in this area and in this church And I am excited about it. And I hope over the next couple weeks that everyone that wants to stay and be on this team continues to be excited about it. If you are new here, this message is just as much for you as it is for anybody else. Because I believe it's what the Lord is saying to us. It says, a vision, verse 3 in Habakkuk 2, vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end... It will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because surely, surely it will come and it will not tarry. Amen? Amen. So this is, I've been doing a series on ECF and it'd be called In the End Times. And last week, if you were here, we changed the title to In the Transition Time. Because it's not the end time. It is a time of transition to the next phase of God's plan for all of eternity. And I had promised you that after we went through that, we would back our way to today and we begin to lay out what does Erie Christian Fellowship look like moving forward? What are our goals? What are we looking at doing? What are our focus areas? Where are we rallying behind as a church? And here's what I'd like to say. And somebody confirmed this word with me last week. We have to see the distractions that are out there for exactly what they are. They're just distractions. Stuff that is going on is just distractions. And we cannot take our eyes off of our callings, off of what God is calling us to go do, and our families, and be distracted by those distractions. It is time that we get our eyes laser focused on what we need to be laser focused on. Amen? Amen. This is also a time where we cannot stop doing what God has called us to go do. This is a time where we cannot stop doing what God has called us to do. So I ask you a question. What if you came to church... Not for what you could get out of it, but what you could put into it. What if your mentality began to change? Look, we live in a consumer mentality culture. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? 
And we ask these questions like, how was church? And the answers typically are, at least in my experience, how was church? Eh, worship was long. The lights were a little dark. Do they know that the heat needs to go on at some point in time in October? So the how was church answer ends up being, it's just, it's not your fault. I do it too, but it's this consumer mentality or this consumer culture that says, what's in it for me? How, how did the seat feel? The worship leader told me to kneel, but there's still concrete on the floor. Why would she do that? You understand though, we have to stop looking at church and coming to it for what we can get out of it. Because if we come to church with an expectation of what we can put into it, our attention, our affection, our praise, our prayer, it begins to change the way we see church. It begins to see and change the expectation we have when we walk through these doors. It's why the Bible says don't forsake the gathering of the saints. And I'm going to get into that a little bit this morning. And the importance of that. And why God has commanded us to do that. And I was talking with someone recently. And they say, well, you know, I haven't been to church for a while for this or that. And there's, you know, some, I get it, I get it. There are certainly valid reasons. But I asked the person straight up, I said, did you ever think that maybe God wanted you to go to church for a reason? Because he wanted you to minister to somebody else. And honest to goodness, the person just looked at me and their jaw dropped. And they said, I never thought about it like that. I never thought about it like that. You are here not just for yourself this morning. You are here for those around you. You are here to hear God's voice and maybe to go pray for someone, to go talk with someone, to go encourage someone. It is not all about you. Okay, I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. So it's not all about you. It's not all about me. This church is not all about the Jason and Liz show either. And you'll see as we move forward, our goal and my heart is that people will rise up in their giftings. And my job is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, not to just do the work of the ministry. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. Acts chapter 2. Are you ready? So how can you have a vision for a church that doesn't reflect or model off the original church as it was established? I think it would be a really bad idea. Yeah? I think it would be a really bad idea to just to go down the, down the street and look at some other church or maybe go on Instagram or find the greatest website of the church and begin to compare and say, okay, well, these must be the things that a church should have. I have decided to go against that approach and say, you know what? We, as a church, are going to look at the Word of God. And we are going to determine based on what the Bible says what a church should look like. Amen. What does the Bible say? Acts chapter 2. I'm going to read verse 40 down through 47. And then I'm going to just point out, after, we're, after it's done, the things that I see, that I hope you see as well, that need to be in a church. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved. Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. Church, God does the adding. God does the adding. This is a side note from a vision perspective. Unless the Lord said, like, we are, we are led by the Holy Spirit. I, I think you all know that and how we operate and how we lead and how we go. But we were at a conference recently and someone asked, you know, what is your marketing campaign for your church? When's the next billboard going up? Look, nothing against churches that put up billboards. That's not for us. The Lord adds to the church daily. The vision of this church is for us as the leadership team to stir you up to bring the lost in, to stir you up to share the gospel message. 
for you, for each and every one of us collectively to go do the work of the ministry. Not a billboard. Now, look, I, like the Lord will probably tell me tomorrow, go put a billboard up, okay? Well, what I'm telling you is, is we don't have this great grand marketing campaign. We don't have the flashiest website, although it's nice. If you've ever tried to watch us online, it's not that great. But there's the amens to those who have tried. I, and you say, well, Pastor Jason, why aren't you investing so more people can watch online? Because I don't think that the Lord wants us to do that right now. I think that the Lord wants you to be the church, me to be the church, and that the church is not a building where we go to on Sunday morning, but it's a community and a group of believers that are the church every single day of the week. And to me, that is where I want to put my focus and my attention on, not whether or not, you know, I need to upgrade from the iPhone 6, and I know it's jumping, you can't hear me very well. And I believe as we go through this, you'll be able to see some of the decisions that we're making and why they begin maybe to make a little more sense. Like not, we haven't restarted kids' ministry, why not? And I hope, hopefully you'll be able to see this, okay? Those who gladly receive the word were baptized, 3,000 around daily, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. In the breaking of bread and in prayers. And while they were doing that, verse 43, and then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Church, I can tell you we believe in miracles and signs and healings and wonders. And we will continue, continue for that to be a core foundation of our church. Now all who believed were together. They had all things in common. They sold their possessions and goods, divided them among all, as anyone had need. So continually daily in one accord, in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house. Church is more than Sunday morning, folks. We come together once a week corporately to worship the Lord, but church is more than that. It's the gathering of the saints in homes. It's the gathering of the saints in small groups, community groups, discipleship groups, whatever we want to call them. I don't have the right name for them yet. We'll get there at some point in time. In the temple and from house to house. And they ate their food with gladness, simplicity of heart, praising God, meaning they're worshiping him, having favor with all people. Thank you, Lord. And what the Lord added to the church daily, those who were being saved. The Lord added to them daily. The Holy Spirit is the one that does the work. We're just the, the, the conduit that he is using. So here are the words that I saw. People saved. People baptized. People studying God's word. People fellowshipping. People praying. People seeing miracles. People with one focus. People meeting in the temple, people meeting in homes, people eating together, people praising God together. Guys, I'm pretty sure that is the reflection of what the church needs to be. Now, I get we're in 2020, and I get they didn't have the drum set when this was written, and the drum set is not evil. But what I'm telling you guys is that we need to get back to some basics of what the church is. We have to get back to some basics. And we always talked about this, this pandemic that is out there is giving us a reset button, a time to do things differently, a time to change the way things are happening. And I'll tell you what, we are going to and have and will continue to take full advantage of this time. I've been studying those verses for years, actually. And the Lord has continued to reveal over the course of the past couple years more and more of what he wants for this church moving forward. In 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6, it says this. It says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. 
So neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. This is not me, this is not Liz, this is him. And he gets all the glory for the vision moving forward. Now I was going to read through some scriptures, you can write these down, I'm not going to go to them. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. And it basically gives our job description as leaders of the church. And in verse 12, specifically, for equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. At the very end in Ephesians 4, then verse 16, it says, from the whole body joined together and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working in which every part, I'm looking at every part, You'll be like, man, he made eye contact with me today. <laughs> Normally, I kind of just stare out there. He made eye contact with me. Yes, you have a part to play in this. With every part does it share. What happens when we all do our share? Causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Amen? Amen. Okay, Grace, put that slide up for me. Okay, as the Lord has been revealing some things to me and showing kind of the pathway moving forward, we have got asked a lot of times, well, are you changing the name of the church since you're, you know, the new leaders, it's been about two years, do you have a name change in store? The answer is a resounding no. It is a resounding no, and the reason why, because let's read the name. Because I want the name to be somewhat descriptive of what's going on. I want the name to be descriptive of what's happening. Well, guess what? We are in Erie, are we not? And I believe that this church, I'm going to talk about in a minute or two, that we're called to reach this area, and what's going to happen is going to come out of this area and is going to reach neighboring areas. Are we Christian? Are we followers of Christ? And are we a fellowship of believers coming together? Amen? And are we a church? Yes, so we are Erie Christian Fellowship Church. That is who we are. That's who we've been for 30-some years, and that's who we will remain to be, Erie Christian Fellowship Church. There's a tagline underneath there, and it says a family church. And I want to talk about that just for a minute before I explain the circle to the left, our logo. A family church. Church, we are a family. Because here's what a family does. When you are in need and, and you need help, you know where you go? You go to your family. You go to your friends and your family. We are a church that wants every single generation to be coming together. Because that's what a family does. And they, people ask you, what is your target audience? What is your marketing campaign and the target? Who are you targeting? I'm targeting everybody. I'm targeting the lost. I'm targeting people. You say, well, you can't go that broad. But I can tell you that if we do what God has called us to go do, we will reach every generation. I'm not picking a generation to go after. You say, well, you know, they have to look like me and they got to be in the 40-something, got to have kids. No. Will that be what is attractive to this church? Probably. Yeah, sure. But we are not going to alienate any generation in this church. Because a family does not do that. A family is all generations coming together. Why do we have our kids in here? Because it's family. It's family. Yes, it can be distracting. Yes, kids can be distracting. Adults can be distracting. <laughs> How many communion cups that got dropped were the adults dropping the communion cups? Right? <laughs> You know, the next, the next investment is probably going to be carpet because everybody seems to drop your communion cup. I'm messing with you. We invested in some trees out there. How many like the trees? Okay, why are the trees out there, Pastor Jason? Why are the trees out there? Because it represents new life, being planted in the ground. In good ground, in good soil. There's new life growing both on the inside and on the outside. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay, so I had a, I've talked about this before. Okay, you see that logo up there? Okay. 
I'm going to draw on this whiteboard. Number one, forgive me because my penmanship is awful. Number two, if you're way back there, you're probably not going to be able to read it. So I will try to say the word that I'm writing multiple times when I write it. But the Lord had showed me something. I went for prayer downtown. And as I was going around for prayer, he gave me two churches specifically to go pray for. And I was with Maggie May. And when I went downtown and I began to pray for those two churches, the Lord asked me a question. And he said, where are all the locations in which you have lived on this side of the state? And I'd be, when I, I, okay, I was like, Lord, that's a great question. When we moved to Erie, we lived in downtown Erie. Several years later, we moved out of, we were still in the city, but we moved almost down kind of to the Mill Creek area. And then we left that area, we moved to the Grove City area. When we came back, we moved to Harbor Creek. After we moved and left Harbor Creek, we went to Girard. And now we currently live in Fairview. And the Lord told me very clearly, he said, what shape does that make, Jason? Hey, man, like it wasn't that hard to figure out. And I was just like, all right, Lord, it makes a cross. I said, Lord, what does that mean for us? A few days later, he asked me another question. He said, count the number of people in the counties that are represented by the cross and where you lived and where your daughter currently lives today, which is down at the bottom down here of the cross where she lives down in the Pittsburgh area. It's actually north of Pittsburgh. I counted the number of people in those counties and it equaled almost to the number one million people. You say, why is that significant, Jason? Why does that make any difference? Because if you look at the plaque on the wall, when you come in to the right of the door, it says that this church was founded to reach one million souls for Jesus Christ. And I can tell you that this vision that we're painting moving forward is not any, di it's not like it's a different vision. It's still the same core vision of what this church was founded on. I believe he's changing the strategy on how we go do it. And so each time you look at our logo, I want you to see that cross. And I want you to see the cross that comes across as being Route 90. And I want you to see the part of the cross that comes down being Route 79. Because those are the two major highways. And if you notice where we're positioned, we're positioned fairly close to the middle, right in here. And I believe that the Lord is calling us to reach northwestern Pennsylvania across Route 90 and down Route 79. After he had showed me this, this was actually, this was well over a year ago. And I don't ever want to share something this significant and important without, like, letting it marinate for a long time. It wasn't like this was this morning. <laughs> hey, guys, guess what? New vision this morning. Here we go. Uh, I guess he could do that, yeah? A friend of ours called. This person's not here today, but a friend of ours called and said, Jason, the Lord gave me a dream, and he wants me to share it with you. And the dream was that, if you notice the, the map of Pennsylvania, and you have the little the hook up at the top where we are, said the dream, it was black all around northwestern Pennsylvania. Just black, as dark as can be. And right in Erie, there was a beacon of light that was coming out of Erie that was destroying the darkness to the left, to the right, and to the south of Erie, Pennsylvania. And she had said, I don't know why the Lord wants, you to, wants me to share that with you. And I was like, well, I know why. Because he's already begun to paint this picture of where Erie Christian Fellowship Church is moving to. And the next thing I want you to notice and I know the logo doesn't do this perfectly, and I'm not saying we're going to ch change the logo at the moment. But it breaks this up into four quadrants. And there are four things that I believe that the church, that we've read in Acts, 
but that we as a church, the Erie Christian Fellowship, have to be focused on. And I'm going to write them down for you. This quadrant we're going to call is the lost saved. And in the following weeks, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into each of these four quadrants and what they look like for us specific. I'm just kind of giving the high overview. And my goal is every time you see our logo, uh, you see that cross coming through, you remember what we're, calling, what we're called to do. When I say lost, saved, I'm talking about outreach, I'm talking about missions, and I'll do a whole separate message on that and what that looks like and what our responsibilities are there. Down here, the sick healed. This means more than just the physical sick. I think it means a lot of things. I think it represents, in general, the gifts of the Spirit moving and in operation. Because we're not doing the healing. It's God the one that is the one that's doing the healing. And I was talking to someone not that long ago and said, you know what? I know very few churches that will put in their major vision statement that one of the top things they're concerned about is seeing the sick healed. And I went back to Acts and I said, I'm pretty sure that they were working signs and miracles. And the early church, I'm pretty sure, saw a lot of sick people healed. A lot of sick people healed. And what did Jeremy Gall say a few weeks ago? Is that when the sick are healed, there's joy in the city. Church, there is joy in the city. Why is sick healed up here? Because I want some joy in the city. I want there to be a hope in this city. That people, when there's nothing left, they don't know where else to turn to. They understand, they hear, they get a testimony. You are out there sharing with them what it is that's doing the work, and that's Jesus Christ. Up here is lives transformed. Lives transformed. What do I mean by that? It's just a process of discipleship. Because you can be saved and you can be healed, but there's still work to do to have your life completely transformed. And it's a journey. And again, I'll go deeper into each and one of these things and what does it mean? How does the school fit into this? How do different things that we do, how do groups fit into it? All that stuff. But I want to just paint this high-level picture this morning. The lost saved, the sick healed, lives transformed, and families thriving. Families thriving. Say, why did you pick those four words? Well, actually, I didn't. Seriously, those words have come to me. They've come to us over and over and over again. I'm like, but they're not that catchy. They don't all rhyme. They don't all start with the same letter. Like, I literally, the past two weeks was like, can I, like, make an acronym, not an acronym, an acronym out of the first letter of all these things that they maybe they'll know and they'll be able to remember it. I'm sorry. I couldn't. These are the words. You'll have to remember them. The lost saved, the sick healed, lives transformed, and families thriving. That is what we are all about. That is what we are doing. That is what our focus is on. And we are going to see that happen across Route 90 and down Route 79. We'll say, how are you going to reach all those people? Is it going to be a mega church? Are we going to have thousands of people showing up here on a Sunday morning? Answer, no. No. I do not believe Erie Christian Fellowship Church is called to be a mega church with a CEO senior pastor that has 27 direct reports, that has an organizational chart that is more complicated than one you would find in a major corporation. I believe, church, that as we grow, as we begin to reach these areas, that we as a church will help plant other churches 
whether they be home churches, house churches, community, whatever it is, across Route 90 and down Route 79. Now, will those churches come here periodically? Use this, I don't know all the details yet. But I know that everything that we are doing moving forward is going to be intentional about being able to be multiplied. It is going to be intentional to be able to be multiplied. And guess what? If there's no mega church and no mega church senior pastor and no executive minister of kids ministry, that means you with me have to rise up and do the work of the ministry. We have to rise up. He has given you gifts and talents, not so you can sit there every Sunday morning and listen to this. Oh, look at this great whiteboard. That's so awesome, Pastor Jason. Woo, that's awesome. No, it needs your involvement or it doesn't work. I could raise money and say all the right things and raise a big staff and do all the work for you, but the Lord says no. That may be how another church needs to operate. That's not how we're going to operate. And I believe that he's calling us to operate in this different way because we are in the time of transition. And we are in a time where we, as we move forward, the church will begin to be persecuted more. And we need to be gathering both as a large group and as a small group, gathering together in groups of 10, in groups of 100, so that everyone is meeting, everyone is seeing the lost saved, everyone is seeing the sick healed, and you have a part to play in it. You don't get to sit on the sidelines for this vision. Lives transformed, families thriving. If you want a family thriving, you need people to mentor, and you need to be mentored, you need to be discipled. If you want your life to be transformed, you have to do more than just show up then on a Sunday morning. And listen to a message for a few minutes. That alone is not going to transform your life. So the outside of the circle says, well, you know, you can't do all this on your own. And there's three words that I believe go around the outside of the circle. The first one is prayer. This entire vision has to be covered in prayer. Very first thing you see when you walk into this church is a circle. It says, my house will be called a house of prayer. It's right in the lobby, right on the floor. You probably walked past it, didn't even know it was there. Prayer. The next P that goes around the... I actually got three Ps for this one. <laughs> hey, you know what? The Lord was just like, okay, I won't leave you totally stranded on the cool acronyms and stuff like that. I do have three Ps. Prayer, partnership. <laughs> he's getting to the fellowship side of it right yeah where's the pizza partnership church we if, if that is the vision we are not going to be able to do all of that ourselves it's not possible that we can see all of this happen ourselves so we are going to combine sometimes and do things with other churches we are going to have an election worship and prayer night and we are going to partner with somebody else we don't always have to do everything on our own we don't always have to come up with everything on our own. There's partnerships with missions organizations. There's partnerships with other churches. There's partnerships with the city mission. There's partnerships that we are going to be a part of. I feel like the Lord had told me that from the very beginning. You don't have to do it all on your own. Then the last P is not pizza. It's participation. Cannot do this without you. Can't do it without you not possible God is calling each of us to a higher level each of us to figure out where we play in this vision that God is moving Erie Christian Fellowship Church forward on Michael if you want to come back up here as I promised over the next couple weeks I'm going to go deeper into some of these things and I can tell you now that Sunday mornings, Sunday mornings has been, and I believe continue will to be, geared toward the believer. It is not that we don't present the gospel message, because I do feel we need to continuously preach 
and share the gospel message. But I believe that our jobs on a Sunday morning is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Because read every marketing campaign book on churches you want, there's no two-hour newcomer-friendly church. In fact, the guidelines say if you want to be a church that's looking just for the unbelievers, because we are, but that's, we're not doing it on a Sunday morning. You understand this? That you should have no greeting time. Keep your services to an hour. And give a 15-minute message that makes people feel good. That is not Erie Christian Fellowship Church. That is not who we're going to be. That's not who we ever were. It's not who we're going to be moving forward. Because I believe that we can reach the lost better by me equipping each and every one of you to go reach the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people that you are engaged with and you are talking to and you are meeting on a weekly basis. If each of you can reach 20 and there's 100 people in here, I'm an engineer, I can do quick math. Who can, who can stay with me? That's a quick 2,000 people that we can impact. And as our church begins to grow, because I believe it is and will, I believe that we will see more and more people rise up as shepherds within our congregation and to begin to provide pastoral care and mentorship to our church as it grows. I don't know if you noticed, but we have eight children and we're running the church with oversight of the school. My ability to take on another 10 people for discipleship is very limited. But it doesn't rest on me. I'm not the one who needs to do it all. We as a church need to rise up. We as a church need to fulfill our callings and our purposes in our families, in our jobs, and everywhere that the Lord leads us. Turn with me to Ephesians 5. I want to close with this. I promise you we'll get into more of each one over the coming weeks so it can be more clear as to what this looks like. And I know this looks nothing like the logo that's up there. But you get the point. The point is that whenever you look, that logo was not designed by Liz and I. That logo was already designed. The cross was there. The circle was there. And the Lord just revealed and said, hey, every time you look at that, you can see the four quadrants. And he showed me, he says, well, it looks like some of the quadrants are bigger than the others. Do you know that in certain times and seasons of our church, we will focus more on one area or the other? We can't do everything all the time. And we'll have different things that we'll go do, and it might be more focused on this, or this, or this, or this. But I believe that the Lord was calling us to focus on these areas, which is, I believe, exactly what we read in Acts chapter 2. Ephesians 5, I want to close with this, says this. This is my encouraging word for the week. That's great, you have all this vision, that's awesome. Everyone's cheering along. Woo, sign me up, what do I do? Pray. 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 He'll show you how you are involved with this. Pray. Pray if you should be giving towards our debt. I believe we need to be debt free. I believe that we cannot accelerate, and God can do anything, but I believe that we need to be debt free in order to begin to accelerate even faster on this vision. Pray. Because in my heart, I knew that we needed to start having more groups, more people meeting in homes. This was months ago. It was like, Lord, I'm not going to make a plea for that. 
I'm not going to say a word. And he told me that in the morning. I said, the Lord, this is, what's gonna, this is how I'm going to do it. That very Sunday, where is he, Chet? <laughs> that very Sunday, Chet walks up to me and says, hey, Jane and I have been praying. I think we need to start a group at our house. I just looked at him. I don't know if I, I almost cried maybe. I can't even remember how it all went down. But I said, yes, you do. Because that was on my heart this morning. But the Lord told him that. I didn't go chase down Chet and Jane because I saw some leadership potential in them and wanted to mold them and shape them into doing what I wanted them to go do. I'm asking for each of you to hear from the Lord. Because one of the things is, church, we are not going to start ministries that aren't birthed out of the people of this church because that's what sustains them because they have the passion and the vision for that ministry Ephesians 5 I can't stop, sorry for you were once darkness but now you are the light of the world church, come on walk as children of light for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness righteousness and truth Verse 10, what I'm asking you to do, find out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, church. It's not against the other party. It's a battle in the spiritual realm. It's a battle against darkness. It's the beacon of light coming out of Erie, Pennsylvania and destroying the darkness. And church, that doesn't matter to me who wins the elections in 10 days. We will not be distracted by that. We will vote. But we will not be distracted by that because times of transition are coming and we need to be ready, church. We need to be ready. You need to be ready. If for some reason the church building was closed and there was locks on the doors and guards standing out and it says you can't get in, do you know where you would go? Do you know what other family you would call? Do you know where you would go in fellowship? If the answer is no, then it needs to be yes over the coming weeks. We need each person connected in this family of believers. Nobody can be left out on their own because the enemy roams around looking to destroy that person when they're off on their own. For it is shameful, verse 12, even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. Verse 13, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We are in a time we cannot mess around anymore. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another. Church, you want to know what to go do this week? Here it is. Speak to one another in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs. Go out this week and sing and make a melody in your heart to the Lord. Go out this week giving thanks always for all things to God the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Father, as we come to you, we thank you for the work that you're doing in our hearts this morning. We thank you for the work that you're doing in our church. Father, we thank you that you have a plan. 
and that the gates of hell cannot come against it because you will build the church. Father, I thank you you sent your son Jesus to be the hope of the world. Father, my prayer is that every person in this church who calls this their church home will begin to reflect and ask and pray and seek and say, Lord, show me how I need to participate. Show me how you want me to be a part of this vision moving forward. Father, we thank you for all you're doing. We thank you for this city that you've placed us in. We thank you for your vision that we will be a beacon of light that pushes out the darkness. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have some prayer teams coming up here. I know we didn't do any prayer this morning. So I know it's, it's noon or whatever time it is, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, whatever. Uh, we have some prayer teams coming up here. Babe, you want to come up and say something here at the end? You guys can, you want you to come to up yet? Something? Yeah. Well. What I want to say is that this vision is all about being. Mm. It's all about faith in God faith that he created you with gifts and words and prayers that you are meant to pray you are meant to say he's gifted you with with mission um i'm just gonna say it because dave perry caught my eye and one day he came over to to fix something on our furnace and we were struggling to power wash concrete which was disgusting and we didn't even know you were supposed to power wash concrete. So, and he says, I can help you with this. I, I've got a bigger machine. And you know, that's this, <laughs> that's community, that's fellowship. And it was nothing for him. I mean, it's just something he had. And, and sometimes I have, you know, piles of something that I have in excess. And then I have a friend who I know needs that. And it's nothing for me to take out of my abundance and share. It's nothing but pure joy. Knowing that I'm part of something that has been ordained by God to fill a need that was prayed out in secret. And I get to be a part of that answer. And I didn't even know that there's no, there's no amount of money that I would trade it. So I just wanted to say that this isn't about doing, mm -hmm. but it, it has, there has to be some doing. It definitely doesn't have striving in it. I also, because I see Adeline Grace here today, I also remember a time when I was just struggling and we were struggling and there were no seats in the lobby. <laughs> there was nowhere to sit and I was pregnant for like the 17th time. <laughs> And I didn't feel well, so I went out and there were tables set up for some reason and I just plopped myself up on a table and was eating an apple. And Adeline's mama, her heart was hurting because she wanted a baby. And she was struggling and striving for that, and not in a bad way, not striving, but praying. And I remember sitting there just eating my apple, minding my own business, and church was going on. And the Lord began to speak to me to encourage her encourage her because she will have a child and i said whoa that's huge but that's exactly what i did and i can't tell you how many years i spent in that nursing mother's room it's the size of the drum cage a little bigger but i can't tell you how much how much faith and just blind trust in the lord it took to come week after week when I knew I would get one song and then I'd be sitting in the nursing mother's room with a baby. And I did it for years. Can I tell you how much ministry happened in that nursing mother's room? And it's not because I, I mean, it's, it always took me by surprise. It always took me by surprise, but so often Bryce would minister to me 
she would minister to my heart. And I love her for that. And then I would minister to Rachel. And Rachel would minister to me. And week after week after week, God was building his kingdom and his plans and his purposes were coming to pass. And I don't know why I feel led to share this. Whenever you say, I can't stop, I always know it's because God has something more he wants to say. <laughs> I remember being in the mobile home and things just weren't awesome. Things were hard. And I remember not feeling well. And Erica and Rich needed to come over and they needed to talk and pray about a situation that was happening. And Lord knows I did not want people to come over to my house. I, I, I had a fever. I didn't feel good. I didn't feel good, not just because I had a fever, but just things weren't great. I didn't feel qualified. I didn't feel qualified to have someone come over and ask us to pray for them, to, to help them with an issue they were having. I didn't feel qualified, but they came in the door. And Rich came in as Rich comes into every room. Big. Comes in big. And he just, he looked at me and he just started praying. And I, I kid you not, that fever lifted right off of me. I mean, immediately came off of me. And every symptom that I had was gone. And there was ministry that happened in that, in that living room. So I just know, I mean, this is the girl that hid in the van. I hide from all you all. I hid for a long time. And I thought I could hide from a call of God on my life by hiding in the van and by hiding in the nursing mother's room. But the Lord said, no, your family, Liz, is gonna thrive. Your life is going to be transformed. You are going to see lost saved, and you're going to be a part of sick people being healed. And it's not because I had time to give, and it's not because I studied the Bible for hours every day. It's because I was willing to hear his voice, and I was willing to speak when he told me to speak. Willing to do what he told me to do wherever I was. And this morning, I said it, um, he asked me yesterday, are you ready for church tomorrow? And I've had one heck of a week, but he asked, are you ready for church tomorrow? I said, well, I'm weak and willing, and I think that's just how he likes me. <laughs> so I'm ready. I know that in him I am strong. In him I can leap over a wall. In him I'm more than a conqueror. But I wanted to come up and say, this is about faith. This is about faith. This is about not being content anymore. If your marriage is struggling and you've thrown up your hands and said, I give up, don't give up. Don't give up and stand and say, I'm willing to do whatever, Lord. I'm willing to worship up front. I'm willing to get on my knees. I'm willing to do whatever you tell me to do. And that's what this vision is about. It's not about more doing, you know, there's tables in back with sign-up sheets for ushers and kids. No, it's not about sign-up sheets. It's about taking up a mission and a call and knowing that God is able and that his kingdom, his plans and purposes will be done. And we get to be a part of it, whether we're in the nursing mother's room, whether we're just dragging ourselves out of bed to get here on a Sunday morning, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's not about perfection, the Lord knows. It's about willingness and faith in who he is that's gonna get this done. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, let's just pray. Stretch your hands out to the vision. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are making a way where there seems to be no other way. Father, we put our hope in you. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you are in control. We completely submit to you. Have your way in this place as a church and have your way in this place in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, prayer team, you guys can come up here. Uh, if you guys need prayer for anything at all, come on up. If you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, if you're like, what is all this talk? I need to understand this cross better. Then come up here and we will pray with you. We will show you who Jesus is and what he's done for you.
you need healing for something, relationship challenges, whatever it might be, you can come up here and get prayer. Otherwise, you guys are dismissed. We'll see you next week. Have a wonderful week.